Hello and welcome back to Space Engineers. In today's video, we're looking at another hover mech, and this one is called the Tarantula, which is this lovely thing sitting right behind me, armed with two large rail guns, and a bunch of wheels on their side, which is how it's going to glide along the surface in a very awkward manner with this one. We do have small interior to sit inside, we've got spotlights, we've got ore detectors, and a very strange rotor system that allows us to lift up and down this middle section to precisely aim those guns in the event you can't tilt the vehicle to actually aim the enemies. So yes, we're just going to press F10, find it in here first of all, have a quick look around the outside, I'll drive it around, show you how this thing works, and I'll show you the small problems that this vehicle has, which is a fairly common thing with a lot of hover-like designs. So this thing is 380 small blocks using the automatons and Sparks of the Future DLC pack. We see here there's a tiny bit of information about such as this was inspired by another design. There's a link to the original mech. So it's to make us a thumbs up, move around towards the very front. Like I said, we'll go around the outside, then go and test it out. So my character can now bugger off just a little bit. Here we go. And at the very front for the tarantula, this is what we get. And that's a camera sitting behind a window block so we get a good view of what's going on as well as make sure it has a bit of protection from any kind of stray shots coming towards you, so you can make it last a bit longer. We've got two spotlights to light up the darkness, we've got a couple of atmospheric thrusters to keep this thing moving around in all directions, which is how the hover design actually functions. And down there I just noticed that, well you can see that I've actually been testing this out, because it's got a bit of damage below there where I bumped into a few rocks. Yes, we can see our wheels and how they're sitting on their side, which is how it's going to glide around. If we're to move around onto the side on the bottom of this first of all, here we go, there's our wheel suspension, as it comes across some steel blocks, that comes across to a hinge, which is how it's been angled down. Onto this section we see a bunch more steel blocks with some more hinges, where other legs are connecting up to this. Then now we come across to a rotor that sits right on this section, if I come past all the blocks there it is right there. That's how it's going to move up and down, and will act as a stabilizer. Pulling away from this, looking at properly on the side, there we are, we can see the side of our rail guns. There's some more window blocks, but we can see some fan amateur thrusters sitting right behind it. Then sitting right next to that, we've got our traditional atmospheric thrusters to move us around. Coming towards the bank of this thing, here we go. We've got an ore detector so we can go out and bounce out for ore patches. Some more atmospheric thrusters, some more fan atmospheric thrusters to keep the rear off the ground. And there is a large battery, a bunch of small reactors. And those small reactors are very much needed to save you from maxing out power if you have those fan atmospheric thrusters turned on, which are very useful if you are traveling around at high speeds, so it will greatly minimize the damage dealt to the bottom of this vehicle. And we're moving all the way up and looking down, there's a clear view of our battery. And along the side there, there's a hinge that lifts up some blast edge blocks, which is how we're going to get in and out of this vehicle, and of course seal ourselves inside. There's the top of our rail gun with our cameras, there's our amateur thrusters to help slow this thing down. Then at the front there, right in front of where our window and camera are sitting, we've got our LCD screen telling us the time of day. Now to move all the way down underneath this thing, here we go, all the way away, that's all we can see. There's a very clear view of how our legs are all being connected up to the main body, the rotor on the opposite side, and well, just the general middle part of our thrusters at the back. All the way up and looking down at it from a distance. There we go. And I think that's about it for the outside of this mech. So what I'm going to do now, grab on my character, come to a button panel on the side of this thing. It might be on the opposite. Yes, it is. And I'm going to hit that button, open up the top, and we just come and drop down inside. You can just about walk around in here if you don't want to get into the seat itself but your head will be poking out. So hopping in the seats, bring up the HUD, pressing number nine, it's gonna seal us inside. First person view, this is all we can see on the inside here. So a tiny bit of light pokes through, through the blast edge blocks. We see our rotors on the side, which is for our legs. In front of us is our LCD screen telling us our horizon. Then looking all the way down, there's our power and hydrogen usage. In the third person view, pressing number one, this is gonna be to lift up and down the main body of the ship to make use of those rotors, and of course to aim our rail guns. If we can't tilt the entire vehicle, we actually aim at the target. Number two for our camera that sits right behind our window, so there is the little clock in front of us. Then coming out there and pressing number two, that's to take over our rail guns, which is going to be mouse click and fire them both together. Pressing number five and number six, this is going to be what basically locks the vehicle in place or allows you to move it around. So currently we've got our friction all the way up, so now we need to lower all the way down to about 20%. You don't want to go too low with these types of vehicles because otherwise it goes horribly wrong and the wheels will just randomly explode. So having on 20, 25% will be pretty good. If I go like that, I'll start to wiggle it. We can start to try this thing around. There we go. It'll be very odd, very smooth. We can just rotate this all the way around. So we get, well, basically keep our guns on the target at all times. But yes, unfortunately I am on a custom pertam where the ground isn't exactly flat on the flat areas. So it does tend to bounce around just a little bit. And we come to a stop once again, number 7 for our batteries to auto recharge, number 8 is for your reactors to turn on and off, 
Then of course number 9 is what we saw when we first hopped into the seat, that's to open and close the lid on top. For tab number 2 then got lights around the chip, turn them on and off. Number 2 is for our spotlights at the front, turn them on and off. Number 3 is for once again take over our railguns, with number 4 to take over one of our top mounted cameras. Now we can precisely aim this, and of course fire it at our enemies. Coming out of that and pressing number 8, that's to turn on our fan amateur thrusters at the back, to help stabilise this thing as we drive this thing around. And then number 9 is for our amateur thrusters, which are the ones that boost us round forwards backwards left and right, so we can turn them off when recharging our batteries. Turn them back on, turning on the fan atmospheric thrusters. Tab number 3 got nothing else, so we're going to do now turn that down slightly. There we go, that'll do quite nicely, leave it on 10%. And we're going to just drive this round on the per tam surface. Going to undo that rotor, so now we lift this up and down, and now off we go. So this is what it's like. It's very odd, and I absolutely love hovercraft vehicles, because they do feel so different from the traditional wheel vehicles. And yes, you do have to be careful about any kind of lumps and bumps, because otherwise stuff like that will happen, where that has been happening a lot while testing this vehicle, we just randomly crash into stuff, but I don't actually see what has been damaged on this. In fact, nothing has been damaged on that, so I don't know what actually happens. So off we go once again. So we want to be very careful when actually driving this round, keeping our speed at about 20 meters per second. You can go higher, but that's where the dangerous part starts to happen with this, where you really need to have a very tall vehicle, very tall hovercraft, to actually avoid any kind of damage when traveling around at high speeds. When it comes to the camera, that's simply what it looks like, would be a very good idea to have the camera a bit lower so you can see clearly what's going on with the base of the vehicle. As it stands, it'll do very well. We now just flip around, aim up for our camera, then just shoot any kind of drones coming towards us. Coming out of that, oh, I actually got out of the seat. Need to open it up once again, hop back inside. There we go. I mean, like so, and then put that all the way back down. Yes, as for that, that's pretty much it all this spider make has to offer. So yes, it's just a funny little thing to use in your world if you do want to play around with a hovercraft type make, and we'll just have it glide along the ground, and we'll just randomly blow up, damaging a few bits and bobs. I did lose one leg there, but it's not going to matter at the end of the day. But anyway, yes, like I said, that's pretty much it for this video, and all it can do is just a funny little thing to play around with if you do want to play around with your hovercraft make. There'll be link to it in the description below for two thousand and play around it yourself. I highly recommend you do. I'll be back with another video some point soon. Bye bye.